Hello, hello! So, this is going to be the first in a mini-series of videos where I take a look at some of the other aircraft available in FSX. Everything I've done up to now has been in the Cessna 172, but a few people have been saying that they want to learn about some of the other aircraft in FSX, so this is for you guys. So today we're going to look into the Mooney Bravo, also known as the Mooney M20. The aircraft featured in FSX is the M20M variant, and you have two versions, one with a full instrument panel, and another with a Garmin G1000 panel. So a couple of key differences between this aircraft and the Cessna that we all know and love is that this is a low-wing aircraft, where the wings connect to the bottom of the fuselage, the aircraft body. Another key difference is that this plane also has retractable landing gear, which reduces aerodynamic drag, allowing for slightly higher speeds when you're in the air. Apart from that, it's very similar to a Cessna. It's a single propeller aircraft powered by a piston engine and it seats four people. So let's jump inside and take a look at it. So here we have the 2D panel which looks quite busy and unfamiliar but let's have a look at it and figure out where everything is. So front and centre you have your six pack instruments. These are your six essential instruments that you need for flying. So you have a speed indicator, attitude indicator, altitude indicator, turn coordinator, heading indicator and vertical speed. Now the heading indicator here looks a little more fancy than the one in the Cessna. That's because this is a dual purpose instrument. It acts as a heading indicator but also acts as a VOR indicator. You can adjust this yellow line in the middle to set your VOR course after tuning it into the radio. I may do a demonstration video just on this instrument if people are interested in seeing it. So, working over to the left, we have one more instrument, which is a secondary VOR indicator. Moving up from there, we have a small autopilot panel, which is for altitude control. You can actually arm the altitude hold from here, or the radio stack, which you'll see later on. Above that, you have a DME indicator, so you can read that for distance measurements when working with VOR stations. Up top, you have a couple of marker lights, which indicate your distance from the runway when flying an ILS approach. Moving over to the far left now, you have two small buttons or switches, which are for the autopilot master switch and the flight director switch. The autopilot you've hopefully seen before, and the flight director will draw a couple of guidance lines on your attitude indicator to help you turn, climb and descend. Below that you have a clock, and then next up you have a speed brake button which activates small speed brakes on this plane. Also there you have a warning light which you can click on to bring up the annunciator panel which displays various warnings and alerts if a problem is detected within the plane. Finally below that you have your nav and GPS switch to tell the plane to navigate using the radios or the GPS. The next three red switches all relate to electrical systems. The first one is for your alternator which puts power back into the plane's batteries. The second one is the battery master switch, and the third separate button is to power the avionics. So that would be a couple of smaller instruments plus the radio stack. And then finally in the bottom left corner you simply have the starter switch. So working across the bottom of the panel now, the first thing we have is a fuel flow readout, so you can see how much fuel is currently being used. Next up you have the fuel selector switch to switch between the left or right tank. There is no option to select both tanks in this aircraft. Then you have a row of switches to turn on various systems such as the fuel pump or the pitot heat for example. The last switch on the right here is to open and close the cowl flaps and there's a little indicator for them as well. So the cowl flaps are flaps on the engine cover which open or close to help regulate the temperature of the engine. The last switch here is for the flaps. There are three settings, you have up, middle and down. So let's jump up to the top again and look at the right side of the panel now. So the first row of gauges here show you, sorry, show you your fuel levels and the ammeter. The next block of gauges plus the two circular ones show you various readouts for the engine like oil temperature and pressure for example. Underneath those you have a rudder trim switch and a little indicator for it. And then at the bottom you have three controls. The black one is for the throttle, the blue one is for propeller pitch, and the red one is for fuel mixture. And then on the far right you have a landing gear lever, and then finally two indicators, one for the elevator or the pitch trim, and the last one is a flaps indicator. And then there are a couple more switches which are actually hiding in the top right corner here. 
these are your various light switches. So very quickly I'm going to open the radio panel here and you can see that it looks exactly the same as the one in the Cessna, it also functions exactly the same. So very quickly, just to finish the video, let's have a look at the virtual cockpit. In some planes there can be a big difference between the 2D cockpit and the 3D one because a lot of instruments are usually crammed into the 2D version but that's not the case in the Mooney Bravo. You can see here that everything is pretty much in the same location as it was on the 2D panel. The only difference is that you have an ADF instrument available in the 3D view which is pretty handy. So there you go, that was my c quick guide to the Mooney Bravo. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll be doing a guide on the Cessna Grand Caravan. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.